when you are you know, adapting brands like Transformers and working on content like X-Men. When you guys are going through the development process, do you think about you know, these markets beyond North America, beyond English-speaking territories? Uh, I'm sure the marketing departments <clears throat> and people above me are thinking about that. But I just think, what is a good story? And, and you know, uh, stories just tap into sort of some universal thing that we all share. And if you just try to write a good story, uh, I think it will travel. I totally agree. I think um, I would make a very poor expert on Africa. But I hope I'm a great expert at telling great superhero stories. So I just try and focus on t telling a story that doesn't speak from a narrow point of view. Try to tell us something that's universal. I came at it from a little bit of a different perspective because, um, you know, X Men was the first, you know, property that I really went after. It was interesting because at that time, comic book movies were not doing well at the box office, and Marvel was entering into bankruptcy. So I had to approach it a little bit from the business side, which was the producer, uh, but also having written the the treatment for X Men One and been screenwriter for 18 months on that project, um, you know, having 38,000 comics, I knew that that mythology like the back of my hand. But the studio had invested already in a bunch of other scripts written by people who didn't know the comics. And it was out of sync. And I think what we saw in that late 90s, early 2000 was the generation who grew up with a sincere love for the comics start to get into positions of power around town and actually be able to steer Hollywood in the right direction. And that's why you have the box office success, I think that we have.